Okay, let's move on to the, the other strategies. Eh? So next strategy that we're going to discuss here is the proportion concepts of number times value. Okay, proportion concepts of number times value. So when do we use this strategy? Okay, so we use this strategy where there are word problems involving proportions. What do I mean by proportions? Okay, I will show you some questions and then you understand this better. Eh? Okay, so what are the, the clues? First of all, they will mention about to identify relationships. Example, twice as many as ratio, you can use for ratio, fractions, percentage less than, okay? Two strategies that you can use, guess and check. And the second one is number times value, okay? So if you do not know the strategy of number times value, some students would use guess and check. And you will see later that guess and check may not be the, the best uh, strategy to solve a question. Uh, there are many limitations to guess and check. Uh. Number one, it is very tedious. Number two, it is very long-winded. Uh. We do not have the luxury of time during the exams. Okay, let's take a look at this question. Eh? So there are twice as many, twice as many $2 notes as $5 notes in a bag. Given that the total amount, the total amount of money in the bag is $297, how many $5 notes are there? Okay, so you can see here it is uh, it is a little bit complicated. Why? Because there are two variables being mentioned here. Number one, the number of the notes. Okay, you can see here twice as many referring to the number of the notes. And these two dollars represent the, the value. All right, likewise here, the five dollars here represent the value. Okay, so example, uh, let's say in, in my wallet, I may have, uh, you know, I may have five notes, but I may have two two dollar notes and three five dollar notes, or I could be having all five five dollar notes. So here you have to uh, take note that they are referring to two different variables here. One is the number of the notes. Secondly, is the value of the notes. Okay. So how we can solve this problem? Number one, you can use the guess and check. All right. Now all of you are very familiar with guess and check. So guess and check, you will be, you know, it will be quite, uh, you know, familiar to all of you. But the problem is, it can be a little bit long-winded uh, and takes up a lot of time. Huh? So let's see here. So you draw a table in guess and check, two dollar notes, five dollar notes. Now the proportion between the two and five dollar notes is always twice, right? Okay, it's always twice. So that's why you put here two units, one unit. So if there are two units of two dollar notes, two dollars times multiply by two, you get four dollars. For the five dollars, one unit, five times one, you get five dollars. So total, you get nine dollars. Now, is this your target? Very far off, right? Your target is 297. So you put a, you check, you put a cross. Okay. Okay, so you go on, okay, to continue doing guess and check. Now, take note, when you're doing guess and check, the proportion must always be kept twice. Okay, you can see here, four out of two, six is to three. 66 is to 33. Okay, so the proportion or the the you know the ratio between the two dollar notes and five dollar notes is always two is to one. All right, so that we we are keeping in mind uh, the constraints in the question. Okay, now let's take a look. Huh? If let's say we guess that the ratio is four is to two, so four divided by two dollars, I get eight dollars. Two multiplied by five, I get ten dollars. So I add eight dollars and ten dollars, I get eighteen dollars, which is still very far off from two hundred and ninety-seven. So some students may go on and on and on and on. So until you get the answer, which is sixty-six is to thirty-three. So sixty-six units multiplied by two dollars, we get one hundred and thirty-two. Thirty-three multiplied by four dollars, you get one hundred and sixty-five. Okay, and you add up together, you get two hundred and ninety-seven. And here you can see that the number of five-dollar notes. Okay, which uh, meets the requirements of the question is 33. Okay, is 33. Yeah? Okay. All right. So you can see that we may need to do many, many guess and checks be before we can derive the answer. So this is, you know, it is not, not efficient and it's very, very, uh, you know, not the, the best way to solve a PSLE question. Okay. Now let's solve using the number times value method. Okay. Same question. So what I do is I draw a box, right? I draw a table. 
And uh, the first one represent the notes, which is two and five dollars. And here represent the proportion. Since they are twice, so two units out of one unit, right? Two is to one. Now value here, value represent the the value of one note. There are two dollar notes and five dollar notes, right? So two dollars here, five dollars here. So since I have twice the number or twice the number of uh, two dollar notes. Okay, I multiply times two, I get four. All right, for five dollars, I get one unit. One multiplied by five dollars, I get units plus five units, I get nine units. Okay, so this represent you can say that this represent one set of two dollar notes and five dollar notes. Okay, and since the total is two hundred ninety seven, so two hundred ninety seven is nine units, and one unit is 33. Okay, so this is the answer why? Because you see the question asks how many five dollar notes are there? So since five dollar notes, the number of five dollar notes is one unit. So we just stop the answer at, at one unit here, which is 33 five dollar notes. Okay, they can ask you also how many uh how many two dollar notes are there? So two dollar notes will be two units, right? Two multiplied by 33, okay, and you get 66 two dollar notes. Okay, very simple, right? Much, much simpler than number time, uh, much, much simpler than the guess and check method. Okay. All right. Uh, Iman asks, but how do we know that the unit for $5 is one? Uh, okay. Because it is given in this uh, question, they say that the ratio of $2 notes and $5 notes is twice, right? So $2 notes is twice of $5 notes. So the ratio of $2 notes is two is to one. Okay, so the ratio is always, or the proportion is always two is to one. All right, so this represent the number. This one here represent the number of uh, the two represent the number of two dollar notes, and one represent the number of five dollar notes. All right. Okay, I hope everyone understand. All right, let's take a look at. Another example, okay, another slightly more challenging example. Okay, now uh, on the topic of percentage, all right? So each rock melon was sold at $5. So the value of each rock melon is $5. Each watermelon costs 20% less than each rock melon. Now, Mr. Wong paid $490 for some rock melons. 60% of the fruits he bought were rock melons. Okay, 60% of the fruits were rock melons. How many more did he spend on rock melons than on watermelons? Okay, so we can see. Let's break down one by one. Huh? So you can see here the number of units, since they are 60% are rock melons. So I put here in terms of the number, 60% rock melons. So the balance, 40% must be watermelon, right? So the proportion, I simplify. I change percentage into units. So I get three units here. Okay. Three units of rock melon and two units of watermelon. Okay, and the value, what about the value? Each rock melon costs $5. So the value is $5. And each watermelon costs 20% less. Now, how do you calculate the value of the watermelon? So since it is 80, uh, 40, uh, sorry, 20% less, okay, so the value is 80%. So 80% of $5, I get five, $4. Okay, so the value of the watermelon is $4, right? Okay, it's not difficult. Huh? Don't worry. Remember, I told you that percentage, fractions, ratio, they are very closely related. So all you need to do is to convert everything into uh, units, ratio, or fractions here. So since once I have the table here, you can see that. Uh, so I already set up the tables. So number of units, the proportion between rock melon and watermelon is always 3 to 2, right? And the value of each rock melon is five dollars, and the value of each watermelon s is four dollars. Okay, so using the number times value strategy, I multiply right five dollars multiply by three units, I get three units. Okay, so four dollars multiply by two units, I get eight units here. Okay, so I add up together, it becomes twenty three units. Okay, so I've spent twenty three units here. Since Mr. Wong bought $460, so 23 units is 
Okay. One unit is $20. How I get $20? 460 divided by 23. And they ask you how many more did he spend on rock melons than on watermelon? Uh, this is a little bit tricky. Now, how many more? So this represents the amount of money that he spent on rock melon. And this represents the amount of money that Mr. Wong spent on watermelon. So what is the difference? Because the question asks you how much more did he spend on rock melon than watermelon? So the difference is 15 minus 8, you get 7 units. So 7 unit is 20 multiplied by 7, you get $140. Okay? So a little bit challenging. They could have asked you how many rock melons are there or how many watermelons are there. But instead, in this question, there's slight variation. They ask you for how much more did you spend on rock melon than on watermelon. So you have to subtract 15 units minus 8 units to get 7 units. Okay? Uh, Taufik asks, why 7 units? 15 units minus 8. Now this 15, uh, now take note, uh, this 3 is the, the number of rock melon. 3 units represent number of rock melons. $5 represent the value. Okay, the value of each rock melon. So 15 units represent the amount that he purchased. Okay, meaning that the value multiplied by the amount that he purchased. That's why you have 15 units here. So likewise, 8 units here, 2 multiplied by 4. So 8 units here represent the amount of money that he spent on watermelon. So how much more did he spend on rock melon as compared to watermelon? That is why 15 units minus 8 units, you get 7 units. Again, Zahid, you have never seen this question before. Of course, all right, in PSLE, I think probably most of the questions we have not seen before. Eh? So maths is not, uh, you know, it's not a memorizing subject. Eh? You have to be able to, you know, apply whatever strategies, whatever formula that uh, you have learned to the different kind of questions. Okay. All right.